Hi, this is Pam, Flower Patch Farmhouse, and I am giving you an update today on the seed starting mix comparison. So here's the tomato seeds that I planted. I have them all marked, and if you can hear my chickens, forgive them. They are just happy that it's a sunny, warm day. So they are being very noisy today. So I have some pots. I'm going to pot them up too today. But I wanted to show you my comparison, which I found to be very interesting because this one here is the one with the miracle Grow in it, the seed starting mix. And it looked very similar to the Jiffy being very powdery um, and loose, but it was the very first to germinate. And um, they're pretty sturdy and strong. And then the second to germinate was my mix. Now mine are about the same size and uh, maybe the leaves are a tiny bit smaller but that's the comparison between mine and the mine and I mean is my potting soil that mix that I use and then here is this one was the um, the one that I said looked woody GB uh, I can't remember the name of it gardeners in bloom I think and it was an organic and um, these ones came up a little bit slower, but now they've caught up just as quick as could be. Now I will say with mine and the other two that had no fertilizers in them, I started giving them a very weak dilution once they first got their first leaves. And I mean weak by a quarter strength, like if you had some a liquid feed. So um, this one is the Jiffy. These two of the Costa Lito Genovese did not germinate, but that doesn't mean it was the mix. It could have been those seeds, or I got them too deep, or whatever. And these ones I did not put two per cell in. So the ones that I did put two per cell, two came up pretty much. So anyways, the Jiffy um, did just as well as the one with the miracle Grow in it. And then so did all of them. Actually, they're about the same. So the test was, do you have to use a seed starting mix when you germinate your seeds? And obviously the answer is no, because they all came up, they all grew about the same rate, and they did have done beautifully, and now they're ready to pot up. So let's go ahead and pot them up, and I'm even going to divide the ones that have two in them. And... Um, why I do that is it's really not necessary to cut one off or worry about disturbing the roots. Um, a garden center, not a garden center, it's a wholesale nursery that I frequent. Um, they just mass sow in big planters, big um, trays like this, and then they prick them out, pot them on, and that's the ones they sell at the garden centers. Um, they sell to grocery stores. They sell to um, smaller um family-owned nurseries, and that's how they grow their starts. They don't do individuals. They don't worry about um, disturbing the roots, and they do just fine. So I am going to start by filling my little pot halfway. Now, I um, let me go ahead and point the camera down so that you can really see what I'm doing. I'm pretty sure you can see. Now, this potting mix that I'm using today, uh-oh, Somehow I dumped out a plant in here and it had a seed in it. And now, I don't know what I did. Goodness gracious me. I'm going to pop this up just really quick to save it. That's what I get for not having things marked. All right. We'll set that aside. All saved. All right. Let me make sure there's nothing else in here. Anyways, this is a mix of a little bit of perlite, and we went and got some compost from a organic turkey farm. And, um, well, actually, it's at a feed store that gets it from the organic turkey farm. And it is the most magnificent stuff. You cannot even buy potting soil. It's wonderful. So, anyways, here's my pot. I've got it probably two-thirds of the way full. This is one of those tall four inch pots you used to get, uh, they used to call them premium four inches, but now they call 
these a premium four inches. What's nice about these is you can develop a good root system in there, a nice deep root system. Now I'm going to start with this one. This is the Gardeners in Bloom. And I'm just going to pop these two out very carefully. Just loosen them up. I'm not going to pop it all the way out. I might damage it. So I'm going to grab it by one of the um, secondary leaves. When I mean not the first leaves. These are the first leaves. These are the second ones to come up. And I'm going to tease this out so I don't disturb it too much. And sometimes what I'll do is I will put a little bit of water in there. Dip it in a little bit of water. Let me get that secondary leaf on that one. See, and I just pull them apart. Set that one over there, and I'm going to get this as deep as possible, and I'm going to bury the stem. Now, why do I bury the stem? Actually, it grows more roots from the stem. Now, normally I have a pan under here that catches the extra dirt, but I didn't do that because I'm running out of space in this greenhouse. And I, let me tell you, it's pretty cramped. Got all my seedlings going. I got quite a few. Okay. So I will set that aside and I will pot up the one that was in there with it. And that's this one. Now I'm not I'm grabbing it by the stem, which is a big no-no, but I was very gentle. So there we go. So now we have two, and I need to make sure I mark these. These are the Camp Joy size. Oh, it's bugging me that this dirt's coming here. So I'm going to get my little pan. I should have got earlier. There. On with the next. So, like I said, two-thirds full. Now, if this was a square inch one, or the smaller square inch, four inch or the square one, I would um, fill it halfway, not three quarters. So this one, I'm going to grab by the secondary leaves. And plop it down in there, squish it down as best I can, and then fill it up with soil. Firm it down. And move on. I will go ahead and continue potting all of these up into the larger containers. And I will share with you in a few weeks what they look like once they've grown a little bit bigger. And then I'll probably have a plant sale because I'm not going to need this many tomatoes. Alrighty then, I hope to see you in the next video.